Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. No, I haven't been posting as much as I normally do. Uh, it's been pretty cold here. It's 38 today, so it's a little bit warmer, so we're going to try to knock some stuff out. So the last time I went to the track, I uh, had some cooling issues with the car. It wasn't overheating, but it was on the higher side of normal. And it wasn't even that hot outside, so... I don't want to overheat the car and I know I downgraded to a half size radiator so it's probably hindering the flow a little bit and plus it doesn't get the whole bumper opening so what I did was picked up this Koyo radiator this is the pocket radiator this is the part number right here this is basically a tucked radiator it's probably one of the more inexpensive ones on the market these go for about 300 bucks also picked up a inline filler neck it's an inch and a quarter and then I picked up two eight inch slim fans these are just some uh, no name ones from eBay I think they were both 30 bucks for the pair I uh, decided not to go Dash 16 AN because after doing some research, the Dash 16 is only one inch and the standard size hose is one and a quarter. So you'd be cutting down the flow actually. So I'm not 100% sure which radiator hoses I'm gonna use yet because I'm gonna have to go to the auto parts store and figure that out. But right now I'm just gonna try to get this radiator set up and mount it up to the car. So here's the radiator out of the box. Quality looks pretty good. Uh, has the two 1 8 inch uh, barbs so you can do like coolant sensors or whatnot. Has the tabs welded on already. Flip it over. Has the one and a quarter inch fittings for the OEM size hose. And also has like the little raised bump so the hose clamp will lock on there. It comes with the fan shroud and two drains depending on which way you mount this I guess for B or K series so one thing you'll notice about this radiator is there's no mounting holes for the fan at all so if I use the slim fans that I bought the actual holes right here on the fan are really close to the edge so it's going to be making make mounting pretty hard but it also came with these little feet so I'm going to use these feet and then this drill through here and I'm going to probably rib nut it depending on how much space I have in between the actual fan shroud and the back of the radiator. But in order to do that I'm going to have to put some tape down underneath of these and mark the holes and then remove the plate with just these uh, looks like 10 millimeter bolts. There's four for each section of the shroud. So I'm going to do that real quick. Alright so I have my four little marks to drill out. I'm going to use a step bit and aluminum rivet nuts. So I'm going to drill these out real quick and then pop the four rivet nuts in and try to line the fan up. Alright, so I got the rivet nuts done on one side. And if you can see, there's still a good amount of clearance. Probably about four or five millimeters. So I'm going to mount up one of the fans. I just got some uh, short 10 millimeter bolts. And then we'll mark out the other side and get that one drilled and rib nutted. So I just wanted to give you a side-by-side -side comparison of how much thicker the Koyo radiator is compared to one of the eBay half rads. So I kind of got this thing sandwiched in here right now. So I just did this so I could figure out where I need to cut the hood latch support. So I have a line right there, it will be pretty tight against the top, but I'd rather cut too little than too much. And I'm going to cut right across the bottom. So this is the section that I cut out. That looks pretty good. I have to trim the top piece just a little bit because it's touching the radiator, but it's kind of just sitting in there right now. It looks pretty good. I want to try to figure out where I have to drill holes in the tabs to mount this and then once I get it marked out I'll show you 
All right, so I got this cut. I flatten it out a little bit more. I'll put paint on both pieces that were cut. Lay a strip of rubber across here. So I have the radiator sitting on top of that rubber. And I have it lined up where it looks center to me. On the inside brackets, I'll put some tape on there. Mark the line on both sides. So I'm gonna drill a hole in this and then I'm gonna drill a hole into the actual core support and mount it up. I have some pretty big bolts that I wanna use. And then I'll tug on it to see if it feels strong enough. If not, we'll add a second bolt on each side. So I'm not exactly sure where I left off, but I ended up getting the radiator mounted in on both sides. I just have a bolt, a washer, and on the back, two rubber washers, the core support, and then two rubber washers, another washer, and then the bolt. Um, I'm gonna cut this. This is still super wobbly. So what I ended up doing was I drilled two holes here. And this is a piece of aluminum angle right here. When it gets a little bit warmer, I'm gonna try to aluminum braze this, but it's way too cold for the metal even to heat up the temperature. Or I'm just gonna take it somewhere and just have them run a bead across there. That way this is more supported and doesn't rock. All right, so the fan's still not wired up. So now to get these radiator hoses working. So on the inline filler neck, I took the OEM upper water neck off and I took it to my friend who does structural welding. So I wanna give a big shout out to him, his name's Chris. But anyway, I got him to weld that to this. So hopefully this will work out. So for the bottom radiator hose, the OEM one works just fine. So right now I'm trying to figure out something I can do with the top one because it's still quite short to reach that. So I picked up some random radiator hoses from um, AutoZone. So I'm going to try to see if I can finagle one of these to work. If not, we'll be taking a ride back there to try to pick out some different hoses. So I'm just going to try to work on this and I'll show you which one fits if one does fit. Alright, so I have this hose here. The part number is E71704. This one looks like it might work. Uh, if I tuck it under here. And then it has plenty of room to reach down to here. So I'm going to try to cut this fit this one here and then I'll trim the top if it doesn't work it's a $20 mistake not that big of a deal but hopefully this works so I can use an off-the-shelf hose so I'm gonna try to mark it down and cut it and I'll show you what I have afterwards all right so the hose that I showed you the E71704 ended up working I had to cut like that much off of one end and this off of the 90 but it did uh, end up working straight down into here. I mounted up my overflow right here in the front. I just had to make a little bracket. This is just a little eBay one. It was silver, I just sprayed it black so it looked a little bit better because the silver was all scratched up. That's like 10 bucks, looks a lot better than a plastic jug. Um, now, I am going to work on wiring up the fan. So I've been working on wiring up this fan. So this just had a blue and a black wire coming off of it. I cut the ends, added a red and black that splice into this black and this blue on this side. So I'm gonna tape all this up. It's nice and soldered, it's double shrink wrapped. So I'm gonna hook this up here. And then on the front side where I have my radiator plug, I cut the harness from uh, the original radiator fan that was on here. So I'm going to end up wiring this into the blue and the black on this side. But I'm not going to permanently hook up anything until I make sure the fans 
spinning in the right direction but the OEM wiring is blue and black so hopefully if I just connect the blue to the blue and the black to black I'll be good we've got the radiator fans wired up they come through here all nice and loomed up I tested the fans with a battery so that's why I already wired the connector together uh, they were the same as stock I got my overflow installed right here with a little line that comes off the back and it's tucked under the top hose I just got a zip tied so it's not all over the place um, all the hose clamps are tightened I want to end up replacing the lower hose eventually or I'll just throw a spare one in my track box um, the only thing I still need to do is get that little bracket welded but right now I'm gonna hook up the spill free uh, funnel and bleed the coolant hopefully this works out where this is at but other than that we're pretty much done everything's all put together now I don't have any leaks the system is bled pretty happy with the filler neck um, my friend did a pretty awesome job does sit a little sideways but that's probably just the mark that I'll put on there eventually if I decide to stay LS I'll get a, a track tough one where it kind of curves up right here and sits up higher so then you don't need anything to bleed it like one of those funnels with but all in all I'm happy with this install the hardest part was getting the filler neck in this upper radiator hose situated but you could have just did um a little hose off of here and then the inline filler neck right here and then get a hose to come down but I decided to get it welded and make it one piece um, there's no top radiator hose for this you just got to find something that works so if you're going to be using a B16 head or a GSR head this uh, Deco hose with the part number I put earlier in the video isn't going to work for you but hopefully this keeps the coolant temperatures down uh, the dual fans that come on so everything's working on the gauge it's reading like two ticks past 90 degrees celsius so that seems like it's a good operating temperature but all in all i'm pretty happy with the way everything came out um this is definitely a much cheaper option than something like the chase pay chase bays or the rye wire tucked radiator there's a couple other companies out there that make them this one's about 300 bucks it comes with the shroud you gotta order some fans i think i paid about 25 to 30 for both of my eight inch fans uh the inline filler neck was like 13 bucks and then the radiator hose like 20 bucks but i'm pretty happy with the way it came out eventually i'm gonna duct everything all in but it definitely gives me more clearance and over the half radiator you get a lot more of the core exposed to the front grill but if you guys have any questions about this install or any of the wiring or anything feel free to hit me up i'm always down to help you guys out but until next time like comment subscribe and i'll catch you guys in the next one